The last thing to do with this guy is to build the legs. To do that, we need to go back to the floor plan view. And the legs, the design of this chair, the legs are going to land right in the middle of the arms. One of the legs is going to go basically right in the middle of that square, one over here. And then on the front, it's the same thing. So there's a few extra reference planes that we'll need in order to build the legs of this chair. So I need to locate the center line of the arms and the center line of the back, and then basically an imaginary center in the front. So the first thing, let's just deal with the front first. So I need another reference plane here that is going to stand in for the arm width so that it's all equal on all four sides. And then I need another reference plane that's going to represent the center of that sort of imaginary arm. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a dimension string like that and then make it equal and then put an overall. And this is arm width. Now, even though there's no arm there, that's the dimension I need. That's the parameter that I need. So it doesn't matter because it's not actually going to any geometry. This is just in order to have us locate where the legs are supposed to go. And then I'm going to add three more reference planes, one going down the middle of this arm, one going down the middle of this arm, and then one going down the middle of the back. And then I need to draw dimensions in there that equalize those so that that middle reference plane is always going down the middle of the arms. And this is what we end up with. So now I have the center point, which is basically the intersection of those two reference planes. That's the center point of the leg on the bottom of this chair. So let's go ahead and build one of the legs. Now the leg is not just going to be a simple extrusion. This is going to be, it's going to start with a circle at the bottom and then it's going to flare out and become a rectangle at the top. It's a very common in furniture design, it's a very common leg type. And so we're going to go to create and instead of extrusion I'm going to click on blend. And when you're doing a blend you're defining the shape at the bottom and defining a shape at the top. Now you can extrude a blend from an elevation view and so if you're extruding a blend from the elevation view, you're basically doing you know, one side versus the other side. But in this case, we're doing it vertically, so it's the bottom and the top. Now, it's a little confusing up here on the dialog box because it says edit top. And a lot of people think, okay, it says edit top, so I'm editing the top. But that's not the case. You start by editing the bottom. And so we want the bottom to be edited. And then when you click edit top, then it switches to editing the top. So we're going to start with a circle. And we're going to use the intersection of these two reference planes as the center of the circle. And so I'm just going to drag that out. Now that's way too big of a circle, but we're going to parameterize it. But before we can put a parameter on it, I want to make sure that that circle sticks to that intersection. One of the best ways that I can think of to do this is to click on the circle. And then the circle itself has properties. And it says center mark visible. You turn that on, and this little tick shows up. Now the tick is usually really small, but this circle is really small, so that's why it's covering the whole thing. And then you just simply use the align tool, and you align that vertically and horizontally, and then that locks that circle into that position. And so now we can click on that circle, and then see this dimension that appears, and it has this little dimension symbol right there? I can click on that, and I can make this a parameter now. So I'll click on that, and we'll say leg radius and it's a type parameter. Now this is inside of the sketch which is very important because once we get outside of the sketch this dimension will actually disappear. So now let's go to edit the top and the top is going to be a rectangle so I'm just going to randomly draw a rectangle kind of in that general area and then this time we're going to put the dimensions directly into this sketch. So I'm going to start dimension and then go from one sketch line to the middle reference plane and then to the other sketch line and then say equal and we'll do the same thing going this way and say equal and then we'll give it an overall and an overall from sketch line to sketch line select both of those dimensions say add parameter and this is going to be leg width also a type parameter. And then the last thing we have to do is just finish the sketch. 
And so what did we create? Well, first of all, let's change the numbers here. So leg radius, let's make that 0.75 inches. And let's make the leg width 2 inches. So you can see the leg adjusts. But let's go to the front view. And you can see, OK, well, one, I made a mistake. I made the work plane the wrong work plane, so let's fix that. So I click on it and I say edit work plane, make it the reference level. So that drops it down, but you can see that the leg is too tall as well. So let's use the align tool to align it to align. There we go. And then padlock that. Now if the leg looks too chunky, which I kind of think it does, let's change the dimensions. So let's go to, let's say, 3 eighths and 1.5 inches. And there you get more of a nicer looking leg. Now the problem with this, the problem with doing it this way, is that there's four of these things. We just built one of them. I clicked on the ceiling level. We just built one of them. Now in the family environment, and you'll gradually come to this realization, that Revit doesn't like to have things copied. So you're probably thinking, well, we built one of these legs. I can just copy that leg over to here, and then down here, and then over here, and then everything's good. The problem with doing that is that as soon as I copy this leg, all of the things that that leg is tied to, the reference planes and all of that, all of those associations are lost. I can do that. I can just create it four times, but that's really kind of a pain to have to do that. So a more efficient way of getting legs into this project or into this file, or I'm going to delete that leg, is to actually have a nested component. And so on my desktop, and this is in the Dropbox folder, under Exercise 1, Basic Parameters, under Components, there is a file in here called leg. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to say load family and we're going to go to that specific location and we're going to load the leg. And you can see it's just the leg. So this file is set up exactly the way that I did the leg just now in the chair, but it was done in a completely separate file. And so I'm going to click open and now it's in here. So now all I have to do is go down into Families, click on Furniture, Leg, and then drop it right there. Drop it right here, right here, and right here. It's a good idea to probably use the Align tool to align it to make sure it's going to stay there. But then after you do that, the only thing you have to do is select all four of these legs and then assign those parameters. So leg height, leg radius, and leg width are all in that what is called a nested family. They're all instance parameters in that nested family. And so now I can just click here and say assign that to leg height, assign this to leg radius, and assign this to leg width. And you can see all the legs adjusted when I did that and go to the 3D view, and there is the finished chair. Now the leg should have a material parameter, so you can assign the material parameter to it as well.